Hey, Mike Mata here. Let's talk today about how to get Observer Apex up and running and where does it get its data from. And then again, we can create dashboards based on widgets. So the first thing that you have to do is from a probe or from a gigastore, turn on network trending. And the way that we do that is you click on trending analysis and go down to network trending, which opens up this window here click on settings and then this is where you can have observer trend on lots of things now remember this is not packet capture this is this is metadata if you will or just you know frame header information statistical information that the observer trending will keep and then pass over to uh, observer apex so under the general tab, you know, by default, it's going to do performance trending, transaction analysis trending. Now, you may have to set up and configure some of this. Subnets, if you've got subnets created already, uh, you, can, you can trend all this. IPTV, if you've configured all that. Again, we're not, that's beyond the scope of this, how to go in and configure all of those. A couple of other things we want to make sure. Uh, if you are doing voice and video, again, turn that on, and you can see there's other options there but the the key piece here is sampling divider that we're going to only look at one out of ten packets to come up with the trend you know statistics says I don't need to see everything I can just see some percentage and that gives me you know a pretty good insight as to what's going on over time so the default there is ten you can set it to one that it'll look at every packet that passes by the the Nick uh, you know you might overload it so I would encourage you to leave it at 10 here's one of the things how how granular do you want this information to be the statistics collection interval so you can go 10 minutes uh, okay it looks like you used to be able to go all the way up to 60 minutes but it's now fixed at 10 minutes now I'm running observer version 17 okay uh, under the schedule I would set it to always because you want this information always to be trending so if your observer you know is up and running you always want it to be collecting this statistical data that it can then report upon via apex now you don't necessarily have to you notice there's options to set that for you know you manually start it or you just do it Monday through Friday based on a specific time 8 to 5 whatever so that's totally up to you but again that's the first step in in getting data into Apex is you've got to turn on trending and let trending run for a little while so that it will gather information to be able to pass that data to Apex. Okay next once you have the trending data running you can simply go out and some of the first things we have to do are to create a business group so I've got a business group here for for me m and -E but we'll just create a new one. We'll show you how to do that. Just click New, and we'll call it Test. And eh, good enough on the description. It's Test, right? I don't need to really do anything there. Trending is enabled and uh, selectable. So there's our business group. And included in that, uh, we need a data source. So we're going to pick our data source here and there's our data source and accept so now I have test it's enabled and let's just go double check that so there's my test everything's enabled and I also have an, my m and x but I'm not going to use that one uh, and then I have a source for where to collect that data from for this test group all right click accept and then into settings again uh, there's our business group and now we need to come up with a data source now again I have a data source but this is where you would you would tell you would tell apex okay here's my observer what's the IP address of the observer or that could be a gigastore that could be observer infrastructure if you have OI that's a another piece but typically it's observer gigastore 
what's the IP address? You know, like 192.168.1.1.1. And if there's a username or password, and uh, you do have to set that, and I should go back and show that to you in Observer. Under Options, Selected Probe, Instance, there, option number two, there is a Security tab, and you'll notice that I have set a password. By default, there is not a password set. So this is where you would go in and set your password, and, you know, user ID is admin set your password click OK and then again that's the information that I would put in here admin and then whatever I set up as my password to get that information from my observer okay and then again I accept and now you see that's disconnected so that new uh, data source that I just put in yeah can't get any data from it. it's not it's not available and because there is no probe with that IP address on my network at this point let's see if I can actually make one work uh, how about 1.153 maybe Sometimes it's better to be lucky than smart. Eh, there we go. It is better to be lucky than smart. Okay, so I do have another probe in my environment, and it, it is a remote probe, and it is .153, and we notice now it's connected. So I can now get data from both of these probes. Now, I, this is not a data source to anybody at this point, so I would have to then go back in to my settings business groups test and data source there you notice that's our local observer here um, my data source okay it's not listing it there let's see if we can add it my data source is there we need to add that to the business group. That's my business group. And there's tests and data sources. Okay, I will figure that out here in just a second. Okay, and there it is. There's my test. I'm in my edit test and my available, so I have my local probe and I also have this other probe, C3D. We can see the difference. There's C Cafe or Cafe. So I can add this probe as well. So now I have both probes going to feed data to my test instance there, group. So if I accept that, so now both that saved and again if I go look at the data sources they're both there and connected and sending data so once again I can go back now to my dashboards and you'll notice I have M and EX or I can choose test so here's where I can pick well which data source if you will or which which group because I in M and EX I only have my local probe that's feeding it data so if I look at the application performance say uh, application overview there's there's no data there let's go and see if we can get it for the last day uh, okay so there is some data there for the last day let's go check out for our test one that we just built I would assume the same there's probably no data here yet since we haven't really been trending on that for very long and let's look at the last hour and yeah no data available so that's gonna take you know 10 minutes or so to for it to collect data so that it will start populating since we just added this new business group so there's the beginnings of how to start up Observer Apex, how to add 
data sources and, and create your uh, business groups. Now we didn't go through certificates. There's, there's other things that, that can be done. Uh, one of the new features of Apex is updates that it'll automatically check for updates and you can install them. So we can say right here, go check for, for updates and it tells us, yeah, there's, you know, nothing new right now. I have the latest and greatest. If there was, it would tell us here's the new version and then do I want to install it? Uh, some of the other settings here, manage by OMS. That is the the licensing piece where you can observer management server. We can have observer management server send out licenses for our probes. Everything can be taken care of, administered by the management server. So I hope that was helpful and beneficial. Check out the other videos on Apex on how to create widgets and dashboards and Talk to you soon.